Hey, Keith, thanks for reaching out again, and thank you for sending me such great questions about your situation. I wanted to make another video uh, where I shared this question with the rest of the world because I think a lot of men are going to face experiences just like you're facing and would profit by hearing the same response. So I'm going to just uh, really briefly read your question here, and then we will talk about it. So you said uh, a little bit of context, you know, you're, you're trying to repair uh, a, a fragile marriage right now. You're trying to avoid things getting more hostile. You're trying to do a lot of work on yourself. And you're kind of in this, this uh, phase of marriage where, you know, you, you're not feeling like you have mastery per se, and it just still feels delicate. So you said in your email, I have had a history of dismissing my wife and taking her for granted. So she talks to me, as she talks to me, I give her my presence, pay attention to her, I listen, but she's constantly kitchen sinking me, and I love this term that you use, until she finds a problem that proves that I am the old version of myself. I really, in my heart of hearts, do not believe most of what she is saying has anything to do with me. Am I still giving her too much attention by gifting her my presence, attention, and ears. Wow, what a fantastically worded question. This is, uh, I really smiled reading this for a number of reasons. Um, I love that you're, that you're recognizing, first of all, that you have a history of, dis of dismissing your wife and taking her for granted, and that you recognize that about yourself. That's an excellent masculine quality to recognize where we have not shown up in a great way in our relationship. That's a, a necessary building block on the path to uh, being a restored man, but also being a restored man in a marriage. I also love that you say that, you know, you're giving her your presence, you're paying attention to her, and you're listening. Um, I, if you were sitting in front of me, I'd ask you how you knew that was true. Um, but that's that's a topic for another day. But you said, okay, all that aside, she's still throwing everything at me, every bit of hurt. Uh, everything, right? So why do women do this? Um, I want to speak about that a little bit. <clears throat> I like that you know that it's not about you, um, but you're wondering, you know, what to do about this. So there's a couple things that come to mind. Uh, as I'm making this video, it's the day after the Jewish feast of Yom Kippur, which is also known as the Day of Atonement. And the reason I'm bringing this up in this context of this video is the word atonement is really interesting in that the, the literal definition um, in Hebrew means to cover over. You know, you might, I don't know if you've ever like injured a tree, for example, but when you injure a tree, you kind of have to like, well, at least it used to be this way, you would cover over the injury to sort of protect and just kind of smooth out. Um, and then there's also this idea of of just pacifying and appeasing and making a situation better. Now, the difference between that approach is that it doesn't just pretend or ignore something didn't happen. It's quite cognizant that there's been injury, but the injury is covered over. And so, you know, Yom Kippur is a, basically a whole day where what is talked about is the idea that, um, you know, what we have injured one another we have transgressed one another and we have transgressed the creator. And so this whole day is dedicated to this idea of first go and smooth out, you know, the conflict you have with one another and then do so with your creator. So why am I bringing this up? I'm bringing it up because women are especially good um, at letting us know of their emotional pain that does not feel like it's been covered over and smoothed out. Most men want to try to forget and flee from a woman's pain, meaning she's bringing up uh, some emotional pain and discomfort from her past. And men have this idea of like, can't we just move on? Can't we just go forward? But you know, when you move away from injury without healing it, you're not in a better spot. And women instinctively know this. And so some of the reason a woman will be kitchen sinking you is because she hasn't felt, despite you being present, that you're willing to enter into the injury with her and bring healing there. This is a particular masculine quality that we have innately within us, but we don't necessarily know how to use it without uh, quite a bit of work on ourselves. 
Um, and it's a little bit of a scary and unsettling feeling. And even though we have the innate quality to lead this space in the relationship, we do not necessarily have the skills to do so innately. And those are learned. And we learn those by, by really learning to be present with the woman like you're, like you're doing and helping her to feel heard and validating her experience. So you could be you know, present with a woman, you can give her your attention and listen, but that doesn't mean that you have validated her emotional experience. Now, this is something a lot of guys struggle with because they equate validating with confessing guilt, right? And that's not the same thing. So for you to validate the experience of your wife does not mean that you are validating that her facts in what she's expressing are 100% correct. What you're validating is saying, I accept that your story of your experience is valid, not necessarily the interpretation. And this is something guys get all hung up on and so they don't enter the space with their wives or partners at all because they're like, well, that's not factually true because they're comparing her story and, and my story and saying one of those is not right. And that's an idea we just need to dispose of because it's rubbish. Every human being has their own experience and someone else's experience does not negate mine and mine does not negate theirs. But yet we spend so much time as men basically trying to assert that our version of the story, our experience is the right one. And she feels like we're saying hers is wrong. And so she might be kitchen sinking you because she has not found any validation from you yet, despite being present with her, despite being, um, you know, listening and hearing her. And so you might just try entering a space of validation. There's a great book called I Hear You by Michael Sorensen. I'll put a link somewhere related to this video. You might check that out. Short book, does a great job explaining this. Uh, you wanna get good at that. Now, all that aside, to answer your original question, am I still giving her too much attention and gifting her in my presence attention and ears? This is really a values and nuts question, meaning it's you have to decide how much of yourself you want to make available to the woman in your life. I would suggest that every man has the possibility of making himself too available, meaning if you have nothing better to do in your life than to sit around and have somebody throw a kitchen sink at you, well, there's probably other things at work, meaning you lack mission and purpose, you lack... Um, you lack anything meaningful and so you have ample time. I think there's a lot of game playing around this concept in, in men's work, especially in red pill thinking that you have to like really, really limit the amount of, of time a woman has access to you. And, and guys will even say, okay, you know, you've got five minutes. You might need to do that kind of thing sometimes just to let the person in your life know, hey, I have a limited amount of time to be with you. I wanna give you my full self, but I can't do that indefinitely. So if you're having a problem with these long, drawn out, protracted experiences, the first thing to do is improve your validation skills. The second thing to do is just to hold some limits for yourself. These are boundaries for you, not boundaries for her, boundaries for you. And that might be saying, hey, sweetheart, I wanna listen to you. I've got 30 minutes just to let you know. I'll be with you fully present for 30 minutes, but in 30 minutes, I need to walk away and continue something I was doing. Assuming you really have something worthwhile to do. You can't fake this. So like if you don't have anything else going on, that's the first problem to address in yourself. Um, but if you have other things going on, it's up to you to hold your own boundaries for yourself. And that is not depriving them. It's just limiting the window in which you're, you're willing to provide this part of yourselves to them. Right? And that's appropriate. And hopefully your wife would be doing the same thing, meaning she can't just uh, spend all day servicing you and whatever needs you have um, in every way, right? And that's unrealistic and neither should you. So I hope that has uh, answered your question. I don't think you, oh, let me, let me clarify one thing. I don't think you should just completely remove your presence from the woman in life, in your life, not in this way, unless she has said, I don't want to be your wife. I want space, I want a divorce, I want a separation. If the woman has said, basically, she does not want a husband relationship with you, then my personal values are that I don't give that kind of heart energy 
and presence, a husbandly presence to a woman who has said she doesn't want it. Now, if I don't hold that boundary, what will generally happen in most relationships is women will come when they want that and they'll flee when they don't. And that creates a feeling in a man of being used, optional, a smorgasbord, etc. But you know, she's not going to be different. She's not acting badly, she's just acting feminine. And the feminine is very much like what feels good today, you know, it fills the space, it's like fluid, you know? And so it fills the space maybe towards you and into your husbandly way of being and it retreats other times and it's not a woman acting badly. If you don't want that, you must hold or create and hold your own boundary about how you are willing to be and show up in a relationship for yourself. And personally, this is just Sven talking, I will not be in a relationship with a woman who just uses me um, in some way for, you know, to have some needs met, but has at the same time told me that I'm not worthy of, of a relationship in another way. And so you'll need to figure that out. But if you're holding your own boundaries according to your values, your nuts, um, and you're living by a mission and purpose that leaves you without unlimited time, I think you're going to handle this situation just great. So again, thanks for reaching out. Look forward to talking to you again soon. And keep on keeping on, brother. Take care.